Jerry Mack has officially left the Tennessee coaching staff. Why this hire is not going to be internal for Josh Heupel. Then a whole lot more to Tuesday Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Vols. I am Eric Kane. So happy to have you guys here with me today. Shout out every day, as always, and shout out to FanDuel, where you can make every moment more over at FanDuel. we got a fun show coming up today. As you listen for free, wherever you get your podcast, you can download. Please download for free by subscribing to the channel, wherever you get your podcast, including on YouTube. And um, it's, it's going to be a whole lot of fun today. Jerry Mack has, has left the uh, Tennessee coaching staff. We'll talk about that departure, what this means, who could be some potential replacements. Uh, Juwan Jennings put on an absolute show in Super Bowl 48. Uh, going to talk about that. Going to hear some of those highlight calls uh, courtesy of Westwood One. And uh, going to have some fun with that, even though Juwan didn't win. Trey Smith won in the Kansas City Chiefs. Man, Juwan Jennings was about to be named Super Bowl MVP, and that would have been incredible. Uh, and then Mel Kuyper, speaking on a, uh, a current vault that's about to be in the NFL, uh, Mel Kuyper Jr., very high on Jalen Wright. What did he have to say about Jalen Wright? That's coming up in segment number three. Um, do know that the preliminary hearing, it gets going later this morning, I believe at 9 o'clock from Greenville. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about on tomorrow's show the, you know, what, what the verdict is, what's the outcome uh, is from this preliminary hearing and what this might mean. I, I think kind of going into the day that, you know, if Tennessee wins, then the NCAA is not going to mess with Tennessee no more on this. If the NCAA wins, will they continue to pursue Tennessee? Um, or will it think better in terms of, well, look what Tennessee just did, drug us to court. Do we have time and the resources and the money available to do that to all the other 20 programs we're investigating right now? So uh, we'll discuss everything that comes out of Greenville with a preliminary hearing, State of Tennessee versus the incident of Lay this morning. We'll talk about it on tomorrow's show, but I'm um, going to kind of wait and talk about that on tomorrow's show when we know a little bit more. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, Jerry Mack, Tennessee's running back coach, has left the Tennessee coaching staff is going on to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I made the comment on yesterday's show that we're losing more and more coaches, not necessarily Tennessee, but the college football in general, uh, to the NFL, and that's a problem. And I stand by that. With Jerry Mack, it might be a little bit different. I mean, Jerry Mack was an assistant coach for a Power 5 football program. He wasn't a coordinator. He wasn't a head coach. Um, likely just continuing to move on up, move on up, probably going to get a pay raise as well. And, and coaching the national football league, it's probably going to be, a, it's been a dream of his, his entire life. And, um, I, I still think it's an issue, whereas there's so much chaos and so much just craziness happening in the college game right now that you're losing more and more coaches to the national football league. And we will continue to see that, but Jerry Mack, I just think was wanting to move up in his career. So best of luck to him. I've always liked Jerry Mack and my interactions with him and, as I said on yesterday's program, he was one of the few, and I stand by this too. I mean, he's one of the few on staff that actually, you know, gave an effort in recruiting. And uh, I think Tennessee's done a fine job recruiting. Um, I think Tennessee certainly uh, got its fair share of blue chippers. And, um, you know, so far since Josh Hopple's been here, I think this program could be doing much better if um, everybody on the current staff was eager to get out there and recruit. And, hey, I mean, I. I wouldn't want to recruit either. I would not want to spend what little time I have, not with my family and, you know, on the phone calling, you know, high school sophomores and juniors. I wouldn't want to do that either. But I'm also not getting paid four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year or whatever. So um Jerry Mack was, you know, one of the couple on this roster that was really good at recruiting and really gave an effort. And I think Tennessee's gonna miss that. Tennessee's gonna have to have some guys who step up and and get after on the trail, in my opinion. But also, I mean, he was just really productive. He, you know, oversaw a unit that's has been back-to-back -back years of, of rushing for over 2,500 yards. has been really, really good. I mean, Tennessee led the nation in rushing touchdowns in 2022. Tennessee's averaged over 200 yards on the ground each of the first three seasons under Josh Heupel. And, yeah, there's been some talent in the room. And, sure, the scheme has a little bit to do with it. And, of course, the offensive line has a lot to do with it. But give some props to Jerry Mack. He's done a great job. And, you know, former head coach at the, um, at the uh, HBCU level and um, a guy that you want on your side a guy that is a great resource for Josh Heupel. And so that's why I think this is a big loss for Tennessee. But it was official on Tuesday, or on Monday, excuse me, when he announced he signed a contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars. All surprised over at VolQuest.com, put out a story. Go ahead and read the entire story. I'm going to read a couple of quotes from, 
from this story, but he gave Austin a couple of quotes, uh, you know, when he was leaving and uh, some, some really good stuff here, you know, quote, leaving this leaving was extremely hard to do because of what Josh Hopple and our staff have created over the past three years. I know Tennessee is headed to national championships in the future. So to have the opportunity to bypass one of those opportunities, to have an opportunity to go to the National Football League, which has been the goal and a dream of mine since I was a young man, since I first started coaching, was extremely hard because I know that the future is so bright at Tennessee. Me and my family, we sat down, we went back and forth, and it was extremely tough in the grand scheme of things because you know where this program is headed and you know uh, what the, they're about to do in the landscape of college football. A couple of the, the memories that he had while being at Tennessee is told of allquest.com and Austin Price quote, there are so many great memories etched in my mind uh, each and every year that I've been here. I uh, think back to the 2021 season, we were able to beat Kentucky. They were ranked in the top 20 and we were an underdog going to their place and we score on the first play of the game and beat them on national television. Then we come back in the 2022 season, just so many memories from that year, beating Florida and Rocky Top a few weeks later, getting Alabama and doing the same thing, closing out the season on the Orange Bowl, beating Clemson that year. Then come back in 2023, I'm never going to forget what the crowd was like, what it looked like and the crowd response when Jalen Wright scored on the first play against Georgia on Rocky Top. The crowd erupted in that game. Uh, just a couple of quotes there from Jerry Mack to VolQuest's Austin Price. Read the full story. He's got a couple more quotes in there over at VolQuest.com. But, you know, Jerry Mack, again, his, his, his tenure coming up was, was a head coach. Um, you know, in his time, he's, he's been a coordinator. I believe he was at Rice as the offensive coordinator before coming to Tennessee. Coached at Memphis, I believe, has strong Memphis ties and, um, you know, grew up in Memphis as well. And so he's kind of been around the program. And I think representing the University of Tennessee the last couple of years was uh, a little bit of a pride thing for him. So, again, I like Jerry Mack a lot. Wish him in the best of luck. But now for only the fourth time, third time, now for only the third time in Josh Heupel's tenure, there's, there's an opening on staff. Think about this. Um, he's done a great job of keeping everybody together. You had Cody Burns who left after year one and went to the National Football League. You had Alex Golish who left after year two, went and took over a head coaching job. And so you promoted Joey Halsley that was already on staff to offensive coordinator. And then you hired a tight ends coach, which was a promotion of Al Gable. And now you have Jerry Mack and you look at that defensive staff and it stayed intact the entire time. You know, Tim Banks, You've got Willie Martinez, you got Brian John Marie, you've got Eckler, and of course you got Rodney Garner. Those guys have been there the entire time. There's been a little bit of shifting on the offensive side, but we look at now who could take the place of Jerry Mack. And I think it's a testament to see guys enjoy working for Josh Heupel. Guys enjoy being at the University of Tennessee, and guys enjoy living in East Tennessee. I love this place. I'm biased. I know that a lot of viewers and listeners of the podcast, you know, watching on YouTube and listening to wherever you are, aren't here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I know some are in California. I know some are in Texas. I know some are overseas. Um, but from a guy that lives here in East Tennessee, in my opinion, it's the best place in the world. Um, and, and, and people have no clue about it. Then you come here and spend time here. It's like, man, not only is this beautiful, not only are the people friendly, but it's cheap as well. <laughs> you know, so except you're trying to buy a house in Fountain City. Yeah, that's a story for another day. Um, but uh, it's um, it's a great, enjoyable place to work and live. And I think uh, people are going to, you know, Jerry Mack included, found that out as well. So I think it's a testament to see how guys enjoy working at Tennessee, enjoy working with Josh Heupel, that this is only the third opening in three years. And the fourth overall, you know, position will change. Remember, Joey Halsey moved up to OC, but he was already on staff. So, yeah. Um, who could it be? Who could fill in for Jerry Mack? Well, uh, Brent Hubs over at VolQuest.com put out a hot board version 1.0 for the running back room. It's hot board season. I'm not going to give away the entire uh, story here, but a couple of names that I do, or really one name specifically that I want to draw attention to, and I'm not saying he's going to be the guy, but a guy that was here as an offensive analyst in 2021, left in 2022 to go to Georgia State, was with Alex Golish at USF in 2023 and just signed a contract to be the running backs coach at Miami here just about a week ago. His name is Matt Merritt. Um, that's a lot of moving around. I understand when you're climbing the ranks and you're trying to you know, take steps in your professional career, you got to move around a lot. But even the last couple of years, that's a whole lot of moving. So I'm curious if uh, he would even be interested in this position. 
Uh, why I think it makes sense? Well, he was on staff as an as an off the field analyst um, in 2021. He knows the system. He knows the personnel. He knows the coaches. Knows a lot of the same players as well. Um, I think that would make a whole lot of sense. Again, but he just accepted a running backs position at Miami. But we've seen guys, you know, offensive coordinators accept the job and then leave two weeks later to go back to the West Coast. That's what's happening in, in, in Title Town, uh, USA, or better known as Tuscaloosa. Alabama, as their fans like to call it, title town. But nonetheless, um, you see it all the time happening in college football right now. Coaches uh, agree to a contract and then leave. So really, it doesn't mean that much of a deal. So I think Matt Merritt would be interesting to kind of look at. There's a lot of coaches around the country that have ties to Tennessee, that have ties to the Memphis area. I think Larry Porter at North Carolina would be interesting, though he's been with Mac Brown for a long, long time. But I think he would be a guy that I think Tennessee would have some interest in. Um, maybe Derek Foster, who's currently with the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, he's been around a lot of people that have Tennessee connections, and I believe he has a connection to Memphis as well. Um, actually, no, that's somebody else. But nonetheless, um, you're going to see more and more names kind of pop up. But also, Max Thurman would be a name that I would pay attention to if Tennessee promotes from within. I don't think that this job, at least at this time, is going to be a promotion from within. I think you're going to go outside of the family, which is nothing wrong with that. But if Josh Hopple were to follow a similar tune that he did with Kelsey Pope, that he did with Alec Ablin, that he did with Joey Halsley to promoting the OC, um, I think Max Thurman would be that name to pay attention to. So uh, we'll see what happens. Josh Heupel typically is not in a huge hurry to, to fill these vacancies, but uh, you are mid-February now. Spring practice is right around the corner. So I, I do think that there might be some urgency in filling this uh, this role as as quickly as you can. So uh, best of luck to Jerry Mack. We'll see who takes the spot. Uh, but man, um, he did a really, really good job here at the University of Tennessee. There's no, no no doubt about that. Hey, you know who did a really, really good job in Super Bowl 48? That was Jawan Jennings. Goodness gracious. Uh, gonna talk about his performance in Super Bowl 48 when we return as we continue on right here with Locked on Balls. Get buckets with your first bet at FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Uh, bet on your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and a whole lot more. I've been talking about the Super Bowl that happened this past weekend, and um, I, I had a whole lot of fun. I, I did uh, some parlays. I was involved in some prop bets as well, plus you know the overall winner and uh, spread, and I you know, got both of those as well. And so I hope you did as well, getting a W in your pocket for the final football game of the season. But hey, it's still basketball season, and you can have fun and win some money over at FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. FanDuel, it's official sports uh, sportsbook partner of the NBA. More locked on balls and Juwan Jennings when we return right here on the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into your segment number two of your Tuesday edition of Locked On Balls. Man, I, I told you guys, I mean, I think Super Bowl Sunday should be a national holiday. I do. You know that, or maybe that Monday following should be a national holiday because, you know, it's a Sunday. People typically aren't at work, but, you know, with, with my work, I'm, I'm, I'm working um, on weekends as well. So I had to get all my work done on Sunday you know, morning to early afternoon because I want to watch Super Bowl. I want to enjoy that time and, and have a whole lot of fun doing it. And I did, um, but I was not about to come back and record a lockdown balls after the Super Bowl last night. Just what? Um, if I would have told you that I thought Jawan Jennings would be one of the biggest playmakers in Super Bowl 48, I would have told you that, uh, no, I, I, I would not believe that. Yet he was. What a performance from the former Tennessee wide receiver who came to Tennessee as a quarterback from Blackman High School in the Mid-State, who was a four-star dual-rated quarterback, the highest-rated quarterback in the Super Bowl coming out of high school. And lo and behold, Juwan Jennings threw the first touchdown pass of Super Bowl 48. Um, man. Uh, really, really good for him to see him succeed. Really, really good for him, obviously, for Tennessee, and obviously for him, too, as well. He's a free agent, and so a lot of teams probably didn't even know who Juwan Jennings was, didn't have Juwan Jennings high on their radar. They know who he is now, and they know that he has a, spe a specialized skill set to where he's probably going to get signed and, and, and probably have a couple suitors, whereas he might not have had as many 
prior to the Super Bowl as free agency for him will begin here at the turn of the uh, the, the calendar, uh, the, the sports calendar year for the NFL. I believe that's around March the 12th, my birthday. Nonetheless, um, first touchdown scored in Super Bowl 48, and it was from the right arm of Juwan Jennings. i uh, going to play this call for you. Uh, audio courtesy of Westwood One Sports, Kevin Harlan, who I think is the GOAT in radio broadcasting. Um, just incredible. I love listening to him call this play. Give this a listen again, courtesy of Kevin Harlan, Westwood One. This is how it sounded. Jawan Jennings on the throwback for the first touchdown of Super Bowl 48. Second 10, shotgun and snap. They throw laterally. Caught by Jennings, who then throws back the other way. Caught on the far side, McCaffrey. 25, 20, 15, 10. Broke a tackle on the number five. Touchdown, San Francisco. The Niners have just scored the first touchdown of Super Bowl 58. A catch and run with some trickery. 21 yards. McCaffrey. The Niners up now. Nine to nothing. Late first half. Well, not only was the call good from Kevin Harlan at Westwood one, but he also reminded me that I am rather silly. I continue to say Super Bowl 48, Super Bowl 48. Probably been doing that all last week as well. It is Super Bowl 58. 58, not 48, 58. Uh, but again, that's how it sounded, courtesy of Westwood One, Juwan Jennings, uh, throwing it back to Christian McCaffrey, the running back. Now, it was very similar to a score that went to a play that went for six down in the swamp in 2015. This is courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. You remember this play, Juwan Jennings throw back to Joshua Dobbs to get Tennessee on the board in the swamp in 2015, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. They throw it out to Jennings. He's going to throw it back to Dobbs on the right side. Dobbs trying to get to the corner. He gets to the 50. Down the far side, under the 30. To the 20. To the 10. Touchdown, Tennessee. Joan Jennings got the swing pass to the left side and threw it back across the field to Dobbs. He takes off 58 yards for the score. And Tennessee has cut the Florida lead 7-6 to six on a brilliantly executed. That was Jawan Jennings. Throwback touchdown to Joshua Dobbs, 2015 against Florida in the Swamp. Uh, Bob Kessling on the call, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. And uh, we immediately, everybody's sitting there like, it's that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, you know, from, from the great Gatsby, like me, when he's pointing, like, you know, you know pointing at the, at the screen, like, you know, it's everybody around the country saying, who's Juwan Jennings? And all Tennessee fans are just that meme. Just point, Juwan, I've seen that before. <laughs> and, uh, it was really, really cool to see because we've seen that. Of course, that went to the quarterback. His his throw in Super Bowl 58 went to Christian McCaffrey, the running back. But uh, really, really cool to see. He gave uh, San Francisco a 10 to nothing lead and uh, would have never thought in my wildest dreams, Juwan Jennings, a former high school quarterback of Blackman High School uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, would throw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. It's really, really cool. This is Juwan Jennings breaking down that play and remembering that play from 2015 to Joshua Dobbs. Oh, man, it felt awesome. Uh, it felt like I was back at University of Tennessee throwing to Josh Dobbs. Um, to make that uh, play, uh, I just think about my uh, quarterback coach from high school. I know he's so proud right now. Um, and, man, uh, I, thought, I thought we were going to win it, man. You can hear the disappointment in his voice, and, and I know I'm, I'm bearing the lead here. I know Trey Smith won, and he's a VFL, and he's got back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships now with the Kansas City Chiefs, and so proud of him, and I know you are as well. But I feel like the story from a ball perspective coming out of that game was Juwan Jennings. Um, not only did he get the 49ers into the end zone first and make it a 10-0 lead there in the first half, he also gave the 49ers a lead late in the football game of Super Bowl 58, and... If, if San Francisco would have held on, Juwan Jennings would have been Super Bowl 58 MVP. Here's his touchdown reception where he would not be denied. Audio courtesy of Westwood 1, Kevin Harlan on the call. Purdy is in the gun for the Niners. Four-man front for the Chiefs. McCaffrey off his left hip. Low shotgun snap. Lines right throw. Caught at the five. Between the hash mark. Breaking the tackle. Jennings. Goal line. Twisting. Touchdown. San Francisco. The Niners have recaptured the lead in the fourth quarter in Super Bowl 58. A 10-yard touchdown pass. pass. Again, Kevin Harlan, Westwood 1 is where I got the audio, and Jawan Jennings gave San Francisco the lead, and they were going to him as well. 
They were going to him as well, as well late in that football game in the overtime period, trying to uh, get him into the end zone, but uh, not every football play works. And I think that speaks volumes on kind of what they think of Juwan Jennings. Again, not a whole lot of receiving yards. We know his game. He blocks so well. Um, third and Jawan is what I like to call it when they look for him on third downs as being a possession type receiver. And uh, man, what a what a really 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 good game for him. And um, unfortunately, comes up short. But I wanted to shine a spotlight on Jawan Jennings because he was just seconds away from being Super Bowl Fifty Eight MVP. It's why you play sports, man. I mean, he's a starter. He plays significant play, playing time. But, I mean, it's a guy that was a seventh-round pick that, tank, that that was awful at his NFL combine. But as Kyle Shanahan said after they drafted him in the seventh round way back when, they said, hey, speed's deceiving. He ran a 4.7, the 40-yard dash at the NFL combine. He said speed's deceiving. And he brings more to the table of value, and he certainly does. So that's why I love sports. What a what a game for Juwan Jennings, and congratulations to Trey Smith, the former Vol back-to-back Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. So wanted to highlight a, a lot of that awesome stuff here on Lockdown Balls. When we come back, uh, a guy that maybe will be playing in the Super Bowl soon, a guy that's going to be drafted uh, here later this spring, Jalen Wright. Mel Kiper Jr. of ESPN, really high on the Tennessee running back. What does he have to say about Jalen Wright? That's coming up next right here on Lockdown Balls. What to say about our friends over at eBay Motors? Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle. Leveled up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money is back. Because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive today at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. More Locked On Vols coming up next, right here on a Tuesday. All right, guys, we got a couple minutes left here on a Tuesday. Ward Wednesday coming up on tomorrow's show, plus what we found out from the preliminary court hearing, say the Tennessee versus the NCAA, that's set to take place on a Tuesday morning. So we got a fun-filled show, hopefully an informative show, hopefully some good news to discuss and react to on a Wednesday lockdown balls. Um, talked about Jawan Jennings and Trey Smith in the Super Bowl in segment number two. Maybe Jalen Wright will play in a Super Bowl one day. We do know that his Tennessee career is over. The junior, after an incredible campaign this past fall is going on to the NFL, declaring for the NFL draft, and uh, he will hear his name called at some point in the NFL draft. But how high can he uh, be drafted, and what are they saying about him? Well, the most recognizable face, name, and personality of any NFL draft, that has always been Mel Kuyper Jr. of ESPN. Um, He's been doing it forever. He'll be doing it forever, in my opinion. Um, he had a whole lot to say on Monday about some of the underrated players in this year's draft, and uh, he pointed to Jalen Wright as being a guy that is a really intriguing option at the running back positions for teams looking for a running back. He said this about Jalen Wright, quote, I'm going to a kid that played at Tennessee. You talk about guys that played at the particular program, Josh Heupel, you say, hey, they throw it all over the yard. How about running the football with Jalen Wright? Jalen Wright's kind of my guy. I like what I saw from him this past year. I like what I saw from him two years ago. This year, he went from six yards per carry up to 7.4 yards per carry. He went from two catches to 22 receptions. Uh, Runs through traffic, strong, patient, slippery. He's got balance. He was a track guy in high school. He's a really good high school track athlete. He was a sprinter, so he can hit the long gainer. He had a 42-yard run, a 52-yard run, an 82-yard run, and 75-yard runs this year, all for touchdowns, mind you. Um, those were his only four touchdowns on the year, but they were, they were in long-form fashion. Against Alabama, they contained him, but he had seven catches in that game as well. Continues on, does uh, Mel Kuyper. You talk about production in back-to-back years. He hit some of the big plays for Tennessee in the run game. He's caught the ball better. He was more of a factor in the passing game. Uh, end quote. Some really good stuff there from Mel Kuyper about Jalen Wright. And I mean, I would agree with him, man. He's When he came in, he was a scat back. When he came in, he was a three-star athlete from Durham, North Carolina. 
Um, his due to COVID and his senior football season was canceled. A guy that was undersized, about a buck seventy, it felt like. And he came in, and though he played a little bit in 2021 for a staff that didn't recruit him, um, I thought it was more or less because you were shallow at the running back in terms of numbers. And he came in, I knew that he had speed, and I knew that he was a good athlete, but I just I never thought that he would turn into the all-around well back um, that he ended up at, at Tennessee and just over a short period of time. And he had a great offseason after his true freshman season, and they put on some weight, added some armor, had a really strong, in my opinion, was the best back on the team in 2022. And then 2023, he just took over. He was the guy. And though the carries didn't reflect it because Tennessee was smart and with Jerry Mack and how he split up running uh, carries, maybe that's why Jalen Rott was so effective. Um, you know, at the running back position, he led the nation in yards per carry. Um, Jaden Daniels, quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner of LSU, led the nation in yards per carry, but he's a quarterback. But at the running back position, that was Jalen Wright. Uh, he became the 17th player in the history of the Tennessee football program to be a 1,000-yard rusher. He surpassed 2,000 yards in his career this year as well. He did all this while still sharing carries with Jabari Small and this year Dylan Sampson. Um, what a career there from Jalen Wright. We've talked about it an awful lot. Uh, Mel Copper goes on uh, talking about what he likes about Wright and what he thinks can translate to the NFL. I like everything about him. In the NFL, you got to be able to run through contact basically make the first defender miss. And if you get into a situation where you're off balance, the ability to keep the chains moving with an extra yard or two um, that he showed he could provide. I'm a big fan of Jalen Wright from Tennessee. If you can get him in that fifth round area, you've got yourself one heck of a running back. Some really good stuff. Uh, again, you know, fifth round, I think that's um, running backs. I mean, you'll see a running back every now and again. I mean, someone last year that'll jump up, be taken to the top 15 but you're you're in an era now where ra very rarely are running backs selected in the first round very rarely are running backs selected high in drafts because they're just a, kind of a dime a dozen right um i mean look at the college game too very rarely do you see i mean so C C cody schrader at missouri was a one-trick pony he was he was the only guy Missouri would get the football to. He ran it 30-plus times. He would have over 100-plus yards every game, and he was their workhorse. You just don't see that often in college football anymore, and you definitely don't see that in the NFL. Um, so because of the position, running backs are equivalent to what linebackers are, inside linebackers, not edge rushers, not stand-up guys get out to the passer um, in the NFL. Just kind of like a dime a dozen, really interior offensive linemen as well, just positions that don't make a whole lot of money, because you can just go find somebody on the scrap heap pile. But when you find one of those guys that is a true difference maker, not only are you going to claim a roster spot and hang around the NFL for a long time, and that's life-changing money, um, but sometimes you can be a stud and you can be a star. And uh, we'll see what Jalen Wright's got in store. But he, but Mel Kuyper Jr., for him to say all those things on Jalen Wright, I thought was uh, really, really cool. And, I mean, he ain't lying, man. He he made first defenders miss a lot of the times. Um, he was strong. He he. He put on good weight, learned to run between the tackles. He always had the breakaway speed, but he wasn't trying to run away from contact this past year. He was running through it, and he did a heck, a heck of a job, and I can't wait to see kind of what the talk is about him. He got the, you know, this year, uh, juniors, draft eligible, ju draft eligible juniors were invited to the Reese's Senior Bowl. He got a, an invitation, and he accepted it. Uh, but he was uh, getting a, a minor, you know, clean up and, and uh, trying to get right for the NFL combine and whatnot. And so he didn't compete in the senior bowl, but I can't wait to see what he does in the combine. Can't wait to see what he does in his pro day. Um, can't wait to see how he attacks the NFL draft process. And uh, kind of on that note, not necessarily Jalen Wright, but kind of on the draft eligible, ju eligible juniors are invited to the senior bowl this year. It was the first year. Um, juniors are now being allowed to the Under Armour All American game, not just seniors but the highest rated juniors are now being allowed moving forward to go and play in the Under Armour All-American game, which I think is very interesting. Um, so more and more opportunities for those guys, those prospects to be seen. All right, that'll do it here for a Tuesday edition of Locked On Vols. Can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, Juwan Jennings, a dog. Congrats to Tra uh, Trey Smith for winning another Super Bowl. Jerry Mack, best of luck to him, to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll see who Tennessee uh, picks to fill that void at the running back position. And Mel Kuyper, all over Jalen Wright, says that he's kind of my guy out of Tennessee. Uh, all good things here on the show. Uh, today, we'll look back and uh, we'll react to whatever comes out of the court hearing from Greenville, Tennessee on a Tuesday morning. We'll have Josh Ward forward Wednesday. All that and more 
And it's coming up. It's the plan coming up on a Wednesday at Lockdown Balls. Can't thank you enough. Be safe, and we will talk again tomorrow. This is Lockdown Balls.